Thank you for tuning in. I'm Joey Moss with Bad Boy Game, and, and today in Magic the Gathering news, Wizards of the Coast has announced the new Mulligan rule, and it's going to be official. I'll tell you when uh, it'll go into effect and uh, what formats it's going to impact the most, and uh, it seems like the community's kind of in an uproar about this. Uh, especially certain players in certain formats, and understandably so. We'll get to the details in just a second. Before we get through all that, let's talk about Netflix and Magic the Gathering. Yes, this is happening. A lot of people have talked about they want a movie to be made. Well, they're not making a movie, but they're going to make a TV series. And uh, there's some pretty uh, important big names involved in this. This is really, really cool. Um, here we go. Uh, I got this from uh, Variety. They made the first uh, uh, post on this. But Magic the Gathering animated series is coming to Netflix. Joe and Anthony Russo, Wizards of the Coast, and Hasbro's All's Park Animation have teamed with Netflix to bring the fantasy game to the screen for the first time in the franchise's history. Uh, the Russos will oversee the creation of an all-new storyline and expand on the stories of the Planeswalkers, which are Magic's wielding heroes and villains um they said they've been huge fans etc etc of uh the guy's work uh the russos known for their work on the marvel cinematic universe and uh universe series captain america entries captain america the winter soldier captain america civil war avengers infinity wars and avengers endgame will executive produce this series that is pretty awesome they really needed to bring in someone big for this interaction to occur. Now, I'll tell you one thing. I don't think, I don't know if any of this would have been possible without the release of Magic the Gathering Arena. Now, hear me out. That This game, Arena, has brought to the attention of, of big name people, you know, like a PewDiePie, just to name one, okay? I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that on YouTube. I and mean, when he's starting to play this stuff, other people start paying attention and start taking notes and noticing. And uh, Arena's just blown up. I mean, streamers everywhere are starting to play it. People that were playing other games switched over to Arena. It's, it's just more exciting. They did it really well. And I think all that attention from Arena really brought out um, uh, making something bigger. And Hasbro's like, you know what? Fine, let's, let's have at it. Let's make it into a series. Um, let's do something with this. You know, They're all, It's all about dollars when it comes to uh, the, the big wigs, you know? But fans are really going to enjoy this, and uh, it might be something I'll take interest in, too. I'm not a huge anime fan, I can't lie. I'm not a crazy huge anime fan whatsoever, but uh, I am into magic, and uh, this might be something I can finally get into, you know, some anime stuff. I'm not sure. I really like the artwork they did on, uh, on the latest cards um, with uh, War of the Spark. Uh, let's get into the other topic, though. So this is going to happen. Um, when is it going to take? When is it going to take place? Let's find out if there's any information on here. Uh, NBC is Bojack Horseman Netflix. Uh, I would assume within a, within a year's time, uh, it'll drop. I would imagine within one year's time, the series is going to go live. It doesn't look like it gives anything uh, in regards to when it's all going to happen. So. But well, that's pretty cool, man. I mean, he produced Avengers Endgame and Infinity Wars. That is nasty, to say the least. I mean, this is big news for the community. This is from Magic the Gathering, the official website. Uh, let's get into the mulligan rule, guys. The mulligan. Testing the mulligan. All right. Now, this is going to happen. Uh, for those of you who... Well, I think if you, if you play Magic, you have to know what mulligan is. You know, you start with seven cards. Every, each player is dealt seven cards on their first turn. Um, well, the, the, you know, initially, and then this, you know, the second player uh, gets to draw, you know, another card, but the mulligan rule is going to change. And how it's been is you mulligan, uh, if you don't like the, you don't like your hand, you can get rid of one card and then you get to see six cards. You have to drop one. So you get to draw six cards and you get a scry and get a little peek at what's on top of your library and decide if you want to put it on the bottom or keep it on top. And then so on and so forth. It goes to five, mulligan, you know, you can scry again, mulligan to four, and, and all the way down until you essentially have no cards. Well, they wanted to change that, and they think they're making it better. Let's just read a little bit about what they have to say here. Uh, of course, in strengthening the mulligan, there could be such a thing as going too far. A mulligan that's too strong and gives too much agency over a player's opening hand could make too many games play out 
uh, the same way. There's also a risk that combo decks could abuse a very strong mulligan to much more reliably awesome, uh, assemble a combo early in game. This is talking about my turn one win decks, my turn two win decks. I'm, I'm soon to drop a turn zero win deck. Um, it, 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 this is going to be huge for those kind of builds or just people that just want to build you know, any kind of combo. You get those pieces in your hand early. That's in, that's insane, all right? And that's kind of what this is going towards. So people in, like, Legacy, Vintage Play, uh, they're not going to be happy with this. Modern, I think a lot of people are a little upset. Let's let's get some a uh, little bit more detail about this. Um, or that aggressive, uh, I think Standard's going to be okay, though. Uh, the aggressive deck's always having their best draw, or Control deck's always having the right answer. That's scary. Imagine Control always being on top. Uh, could change metagame balance too dramatically, which is probably what's going to happen here. Plus, the stronger the, more, the mulligan, the more often players will choose to use it, which increases time spent shuffling and making decisions before the game can begin. Uh, there are risks uh, that they knew about um, while looking out and testing the London mulligan, both internally and uh, publicly. Our hope was that it would be enough stronger than the Vancouver mulligan to make a difference in reducing the number of non-games, but not so much stronger as to have detrimental effects on gameplay as a whole. Uh-oh. We still want mulliganing to be something a player prefers not to do if they have a reasonable hand. We just want it to be a little less punishing when a mulligan is necessary. I, I, I do understand that. The mulligan is really rather punishing. If you get stuck with six lands in your opening hand, seven cards, uh, that stinks. Or vice versa. One land and like six cards, you know, and then you mulligan down, then you get flooded with all lands, you know, and then it's like, well, crap. And then you mulligan again. Like By the time you hit four, four anything like four or less, five or less, really, you are in a, in a bad position. You really are. You're at a huge disadvantage against your opponent. That That's very scary stuff, man. So let's go over what exactly this is. Here's the official ruling right here. With the release of Corset 2020, we'll be introducing a new mulligan system for all competitive Magic formats. This new mulligan was tested at Mythic Championship 2 in London as well as on Magic Online and will work as follows. Here's the official ruling. Rule 103.4. Each player draws a number of cards equal to their starting hand size, which is normally seven. Some effects can modify a player's starting hand size. A player who is dissatisfied with their initial hand may take a mulligan. First, the starting player declares whether they will take a mulligan. Then each other player in turn order does the same. Once each player has made a declaration, all players who decide to take mulligans do so at the same time. If you take a mulligan, a player shuffles the cards in their hand back into their library, draws a new hand of cards equal to their starting hand size, then puts a number of those cards equal to the number of times that player has taken a mulligan on the bottom of their library in any order. Once a player chooses not to take a mulligan, the remaining cards become that player's opening hand and that the player may not take any further mulligans. This process is then repeated until no player takes a mulligan. A player can take mulligans until their opening hand would be zero cards. That is very significant. So they break it down. Essentially, each time you take a mulligan, you draw up to seven cards. Then put a number of cards from your hand equal to the number of times you've mulliganed this game on the bottom of your library in any order of your choice. Your starting hand will be uh, will still be down a card for each time you mulligan, but you'll always get to select that starting hand from a choice among seven cards. Unlike the current Vancouver Mulligan, there's no scry after you decide your, your starting hand. So let's imagine every single time you mulligan, you can look at a new hand of seven cards. If you're a combo player or control player or whatever kind of player, you're able to pick, it's, you're just picking the best of those seven. So you mulligan once and you pick the best, you pick the best six of those seven. You mulligan again, you pick the best five of those seven and put the others on the bottom. That's huge, man. That changes things so much because you're able to see seven cards every time you mulligan and select from those. Opening hands are going to be so much more better now. But that means your opponent, they have the same advantage as you do. But I really think depending on what kind of deck you're up against, that makes all the matter. That makes all the difference, man. Um, I don't, for standard players, I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. But for you modern players out there, Holy smokes, man. I mean, Commander, this is changing things big. I think Commander might not be too crazily impacted by it, you know, because, I mean, it's a, it's a group of players, you know, four people going at it, you know. 
I think it won't be too insane there. But maybe whoever has the most money in their deck, you know, might end up just taking home the prize every time. I, maybe. Hear me out. But this is going to be big, man, especially like legacy players, because there's ways to set up turn one wins. I built decks on this. Turn two wins. They are fast. And if you get an opening hand like that, that's insane. And some of them only require five cards. So with this new mulligan rule in play, you can easily assemble that. Where before, you know, people kind of laughed at some of the decks. You know, they're like, no way. That'll never, the odds of this happening are so slim. Guess what? With this new mulligan rule, they just increased. The odds of you getting the cards you need have increased because you're able to see seven cards every time. Even that's that is so that's so impactful, man. Um, let's see what else they got to say here. The goal of this new London Mulligan is to make the game where one or more players mulligan more competitive, especially in cases where players mulligan an unequal number of times. In particular, greater selection of the starting hand will reduce the number of non-games. Right, right, right. Uh, this rule goes into effect with the Core Set 2020 rules update. Um, see below for details on when the new rule will be implemented on Tabletop Magic Online and Magic the Gathering Arena. Let's find out that uh, why the change mulligan system has uh, changed several times throughout the game's history from the early no-land, all-land mulligan to the Paris mulligan. There's been a lot of different mulligans in play, man. Uh, as more and more games of Magic Gathering have been played these days across both tables and digital platforms, we've gathered data that shows that even the current Vancouver mulligan isn't doing as good a job as it could be in providing a competitive starting point. Yeah, they want it to be really competitive from the, from the get-go. And I agree with that. But it's almost like... Will it come to a point where it's like, okay, you have 60 cards in your deck. You know what? Just take a look. Pick out seven cards in your deck and just start with that. Are we ever gonna, I mean, that's that's kind of where we're going with this. Am I am I right? Am I wrong for thinking that way? That kind of seems like where we're headed, man. Because um, they are just making the strength of these opening hands so much more better. And there's a lot of cards that are going to benefit from this rule change going into play. I mean, there's going to be card spikes all over the place. You know, like there, there's cards that say if, if you start with this card in your opening hand, you may play it for free. And these some of these spells cost four to cast, five to six to cast. And you can just drop it now. That's insanity, man. This is going to be game. This is huge. There's that one Sphinx. I was speculating. I purchased 200 of those Sphinxes that came out in, uh, what was it, Ravnica Allegiance, I think, um, where you can start like with put it open your hand or something like that. There's one card. Um, and it's, it's, it bought it for like 10 cents a piece, you know, but now well, they're probably gonna go up in price a little bit, you know, uh, that car might see more play. Uh, this new mulligan is going to happen, baby. Uh, what they've learned by, by and large, what we've seen this upsize of mulligan outweigh the downsides and risks featured a diverse, uh, and healthy modern metagame. We'll see, man. I don't know. Uh, they think it's going to be pretty good. Um, that combos were, were assembled a bit more frequently was largely counterbalanced by sideboard cards appearing more often. So now sideboard, I mean, uh, prices are going to go up in, in cards. I'm just telling you. It's going to go down, man. Card prices are going to go up. Uh, what do you guys think of this? Is this, is this something you were, uh, you were hoping for? Are you scared? <laughs> do you like it? I, I, I'm, I'm excited to, to try it out. I haven't played with it yet. For any of you who have participated in the event that was utilizing this new um, mulligan rule, I'd love to hear from you in the comments, especially I'm sure other users would like to as well. Um, so definitely let's hear about it. But uh, the question is whether the metagame will adapt to those changes and come to a new healthy equilibrium. So far, all signs point to yes, including from modern. So they are saying it's going to be good. But I mean, magic says a lot of things, you know, as, we're going to find out, man. We understand that players have had some concerns about eternal formats, particularly Legacy and Vintage. We agreed, and gathering data on those formats uh, is part of why we tested the mulligan of Magic Online from what we saw. The metagames were able to adjust even better than expected. One characteristic of Legacy is that there are very efficient one-for-one -one answers to most threats, which has the effect of making raw card quantity important. That in turn means choosing to mulligan aggressively to a particular card or combo is more of a cost. Very true. And so we weren't seeing that strategy be very successful. Uh, I don't know. I beg to differ, man. We're going to find out. Vintage is harder to gather data on due to smaller sample sizes, but we did not see any alarming imbalances jump out. For example, the win rate of Dredge did not change markedly, even with a greater chance of finding Bizarre of Baghdad in the opening hand. 
Again, this is perhaps counterbalanced by other decks also more reliably finding their sideboard cards. Yeah, true. Our approach for all formats will be to allow players and metagames to adjust and to gather data and feedback before considering any banned and restricted list changes. Trying to be predictive uh, with changes isn't the right approach for us or for the community. To be clear, we don't currently have any specific cards or decks that we would expect to have to target with BNR changes, though it is possible that need for change emerges down the road. Okay. Okay. Format. Yeah. Good. Yeah. This is a good idea. Introduce it uh, format by format, you know, like let it be an option. I don't know. When can we, when can I use it? We'll be rolling out the London Mulligan and all tabletop and digital expressions of magic with the release of Corset 2020, starting with tabletop Corset 2020 pre-releases on July 5th. The new Mulligan will be used for all play. It will become officially reflected in the comprehensive rules with M20 rules updates on July 12th. MTG Arena will test functionally of the London Mulligan rule in a specific event starting June 7th and will fully adopt it for all play formats with the release of M20 card content starting on July 2nd. Magic Online will begin using the London Mulligan rule on July 2nd after servers come up from scheduled downtime, etc., etc. There it is. What do you guys think? This is huge, crazy news, man. You got the Netflix going on and Magic. What are your thoughts on that? And what are your thoughts on the new Mulligan rule change? I'd love to hear from you guys. I'll be in the comment section for sure. Um, some people are upset. Some people are ecstatic. Uh, and also, when you give your opinion, let me know if you're a new player. Like, when, Just let me know when you started playing. I think I want, I want, I'd think really like to hear that from you guys. Let me know when you started playing. All right. That's all she wrote, man. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, until next time. In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening.